Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions for the worlds of social media, sports, and pop culture, and we are going to have a pretty cool conversation here about podcast, landscape, sports, a lot of different things. So I'm, I'm quickly going to introduce the panel. First, we have, you, you've you seen him on Mr. D, Trailer Park Boys, Draw Division. Uh, we have, he's one half of one of the greatest podcasts in the podcast um, landscape right now, in my opinion, the Taggers and Torrance podcast. Jonathan Torrance is with us. Jonathan, wow. welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. That was quite an introduction. Does two people make a panel? I guess so. Not by CNN <laughs> standards. They need at least 20 masks. <laughs> I mean, we almost... A big 50-foot desk. We, we, all, we almost just had just me and you on this. And then, I know. Speaking of this, a uh, reporter from Sportsnet, a good friend of mine, Kyle Bukowskis, has joined us. Kyle, welcome yeah. to Pop Turnitin. Yeah, thank you for having me. I know this was planned out for a number of weeks now for me to come on, so <laughs> it's, it's great we're able to do this. Kyle, you sound like the neighbor kid on Growing Pains. Like, what? You have the perfect name for a sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> Can yeah. I name a you know, character? Yes, let's go. What, what's your last name? Bukowskis. Bukowskis. Yes. And what is? What's the? What's your heritage? It is. It's a Lithuanian background, though I've never awesome. been to the country. Yeah. It's a great name for a broadcaster, too. Yeah, I'll take it. Hey, I, yeah. I've managed to fool him to this point. so. Like, you can hear Kyle Bukowska, CBC News, Regina. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> right? It that's sounds right. like a, that's a handle right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now, well, well, Peter, the mood is tense here this evening. Uh, obviously, a lot of people gathered behind me. And yeah, yeah, that'd be great. True story. In the year 1999, when it was Y2K, yeah. I was hired by CBC to be a correspondent in Charlottetown for the big... Uh, new Year reveal, New Millennium reveal. And this was the time when people were like, I don't know if bank machines are going to work. We don't know if the world's going to explode. We're not sure. So Peter Mansbridge was anchoring CBC's coverage, as, as you would expect. And he would throw to correspondents in various parts of the country. I've always fancied myself kind of a news guy in a weird way. Like I've had this news fantasy. So I prepared this whole like, Peter, the eyes of the nation turned to Charlottetown, its birthplace. Now, <laughs> the small <laughs> island with the big heart cradled in the waves of the Atlantic Ocean, where tonight some 15,000 people will descend on the birthplace of the country. <laughs> so what happened is, I, like I had this fantasy that people watching would be like, Jonah Vision ain't even too bad on the news. Mark, get <laughs> over here, have a look at this. <laughs> what happened is, Mansbridge goes, and Jonathan Torrance now standing by in Charlottetown. Jonathan, what can you tell us? And I said, Pete, he got his first name wrong, first <laughs> word out of my mouth. It was like three in the afternoon, and I was going to be there till one in the morning. I was like, not even my first hit under my belt, and I blew it right out of the gate. Oh, man. Oh, that's, man. That's Pete. And he remembers it, too. He's a sharp cat and really funny. He remembers that. That's right. Man, these. I, let's see if you're going to beat Taggart, who was on last week with some of these these funny stories. The well, <laughs> most embarrassing broadcast moments, fellas. Let's hear yours. <laughs> Pedal's right up there for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kyle, what? Kyle, you're up, man. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm trying to think. I haven't been around long enough to have like a, a good array of. That's of when you bloopers. make the big mistakes, though, when you're a rookie. I know. You I call know. Players by the wrong names or anything. Um. Gosh, I'm not sure. Probably there's there's been a few like in in school and stuff and then in high school I worked my local radio station and being on there for the first couple of times and just trying to do live radio and stumbling over word after word and it was all just a, a mess after that and then you know, you know it's funny like we had like demos that we put together in like our first year of school and then I remember doing it at the time and thinking like ah I might actually be okay at this and then years later going back and listening to them and going oh my god right like it's Anyways, Boom goes so the dynamite. That, right, exactly. It was something right out of there, and looking off camera and just going like, "I'm so sorry," which was my favorite favorite part of that whole that, that video, it. right? The when apologizing. Up, yes, the apologizing. So a lot of apologizing, but I, I sat think... next to Joe Schlesinger, CBC like journeyman correspondent, years ago on a plane, and we were talking about gaffes and moments we wish we could take back. And he said he went to interview Pope John Paul back in the '70s or something. And was one of those, like, can you fly to Rome, interview the Pope, and fly back here for a piece? Mm -hmm. And he got on the plane on the way back to transcribe the tape, and he'd forgotten to hit record. 
Oh, no. So he's like, anytime you think you have it bad or you think you made a mistake, I want you to remember that you could always be worse because, you know, I interviewed the Pope and forgot to hit record. That's about as bad as it gets. So I, I actually have a, well, like a broadcast blunder on my show. I had an Let's episode. Hear. So I had an episode with uh, Tim Oxner from the Arkells. Yeah. And Chris Crippen plays drums for Headley. So two drummers. And I introduced Tim from Arkells as a drummer of a up and coming band, Arkells. <laughs> And Chris Crippen from Headley took a like took, took a session like took offense to that. He's like, I just have to correct you, Peter. They're an established band. They're not a, an up and coming band. And I was yeah. kind of like, and you can't see it on the episode because I edited it out because I was so embarrassed and everything. But like, yeah, <laughs> I like texted Tim both time. I'm like, that that was my bad. I'm so sorry. He's like, man, in a lot of situations, that is true. Like a lot of people outside of Canada don't know who we are. But... He's such a solid dude too. I don't know if you know the connection between Tiger and Torrance and Tim. Yeah. But Jeremy and I record our conversation separately. I record my part in Nova Scotia. He records his part in Ontario. Yep. And we send our files to Tim, who puts our podcast together in the back of a tour van or wherever he happens to be. Mm -hmm. And Taggart is sometimes like, Tim, when can you get our podcast out? When's the next episode coming out, Tim? And uh, Tim's so kind. He's like, man, I'm working on it, man. I'm, I'm trying to find a Starbucks with some Wi-Fi um, so I can get the podcast out from the road. And one time recently, Taggart texted him and said, where's the pod, man? We need to get it out. What's going on? In a friendly way, of course. And Tim was like, sorry, uh, I'm just on stage in Germany right now. <laughs> <laughs> but Tim's such a nice dude. He'd never like say, Taggart, please back off. <laughs> right. How did that come Very about then? How, how did Tim become the guy that was going to be producing your podcast? Apparently, there's a photograph, though I haven't seen it, of the fantasy camp moment where 15-year-old Tim Oxford met his drum idol, Jeremy Taggart, at an Our Lady Peace show oh, because terrific. Tim's dad, I think, it, so the legend goes, was one of the sponsors of the concert or something, so his kid got to meet Jer, and they really hit it off, and Tim was a real student of the craft. And I think, I don't think I'm overstating it to say at a certain point, Jeremy was probably Tim's mentor. And I know it's been a real kick for Tagsy to see uh, Arkells just blowing up because he's known them since they were kids. And I remember the second Trailer Park Boys movie was at the Atlantic Film Festival, the premiere, and Arkells played um, the opening night party. And that was probably like, I don't know, 2003, 2005. So they've been together a long time, man. They are up and coming, but they've been grinding. No, they're they're established. They're like they're doing huge. They just did a tour of Frank. Oh, so Turner. you're correcting me now? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. No, because um, the guy from Headley corrected you. You're you're paying it forward. Oh man, that was it was pretty embarrassing because he, like to have Chris Crippen from Headley, where like when their first record came out, that was like the the record that I listened to a lot in, in high school, and I was just like, man. This is my bad, but you know, Tiger and Torrance is a very popular show, Jonathan. You know, on top of your head, what do you think um, uh, hits stride with with Tiger and Torrance with the viewers? Like that, it's just kind of just like an, an honest, goofy um, show. The Canadian elements of it, like, what do you think on top of your head? I mean, you might you're obviously going to be biased because it's your product. But... I think it's been a really interesting. Um... Uh, ride because given my background, I wanted to produce it. Yeah. And in the early going, it was like act one should be a game, act two should be a guest, act three should be a top five. And the more we listened to our listeners who were like, no, it's at its best when I feel like I'm in the back seat on a road trip with you guys. Um, just trust to your stream of consciousness kind of riffing, don't overproduce it. Podcasts, as you know, is kind of a warts and all environment. And what that did is really allowed room for silliness. Yeah. And I think there's been a real return to silliness in the world in the last couple of years. And that's the stuff that makes me laugh. So I've actually learned a lot from Taggart about riffing. And my instinct is always to just kind of keep it moving and go on to the next thing. And he's really taught me to just like, man, just relax. This is funny. Let's ride it for a couple of minutes and see what happens. And those are, you know, those are the best moments. We're doing an episode that's not out yet. We are doing a top five quit in the darts jams. And for some reason, there was uh, two fathers of confederation sitting by a roaring fire trying to quit the darts. And Taggart's, <laughs> Taggart's father of confederation talked like this. 
well, I suppose it's time to have a... I was like, Bill Cosby was the father of Confederation? Well, I don't even know what accent that is. So we laughed. Like, I don't even think there was any talking. We laughed for about five minutes straight about the idea of Bill Cosby being a father of Confederation. Those are always the best moments. Uh, well, so before I ask Kyle a question, I want to ask because obviously um, I'm a huge Trailer Park Boys fan and I... Kyle, are you are you a big Trailer Park Boys guy? Absolutely. Yeah. So I got a question. It'd be awesome if Kyle was like, "No, it's not for me." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> let, 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 let's do something here. So what would Jonathan? What would J Rock say about Kyle's hair? Because it's it's great oh, hair. God. It's it's slicked back. J Rock, what 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 are you what, like? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you? What's you up, say? you baby belugas? <laughs> whole spouting gel ass death <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, you Casper the friendly host looking bitch? Oh my god! <laughs> like that. Yo, uh, Kyle, does this beat going uh, to the gym or what? Yeah, yeah. I think anything beats what I was up to this afternoon. Here. Good lord! When I walk, I walk with my tail between my legs, off, off to the, off to the dentist. That that it's was easy because we love man. It's when you no, I know, just I know. You know, it's bad. I, I know, it's that great. From, like the rock pile dudes on. The show they they would always joke about me because I don't have eyebrows I can't get the look and T and the other guys in the rock pile can like really give a stern <laughs> look but I, I just look like I'm experiencing facial paralysis of some kind like it's hard to express myself mm -hmm. but those guys tease because they love and that, that's what I love about um, the kind of whole J rock rapper rock pile culture yeah. is at the root of it there's real affection and love and we always said Trailer Park Boys at his best was a show about family and you know on the surface it's guns dope and swearing but the thing that i'm most proud of about having been associated with that show is when you look at the relationships on it like randy and Leahy, nobody ever calls them a disparaging term for their relationship nobody ever calls bubbles a disparaging term for um, people that have challenges in society um nobody even judges j-rock like people that live in the park are like j-rock's black they're not saying that as a joke they're not making fun he says he is, so they just buy it. And there's a really kind of a nice message in that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when there's an external force threatening the people in the park, they all kind of band together at the end of the day. And that's a pretty nice message. No, it, <laughs> I mean, it, uh, we, like I told you, like Bernard, Bernard Roby's show, Cyrus, came on the show. And he said yeah. when they first started Trailer Park Boys, um, their main concern was whether they were going to get like another season. That was like, they didn't really think about if we have, you know, characters that are going to be a hit with certain viewers. Like they just wanted to know if they were going to be able to continue it. It was, um, I always say it was the most fun I've ever had at work. First couple of seasons, sitting around on Coleman coolers, wearing clothes we brought ourselves from home, making each other laugh. Like I have scarring on the inside of my cheeks from trying not to blow takes, laughing at <laughs> Rob Wells as Ricky, you know? Um, but when it came out, it was not well received by critics. John Doyle from the Globe just ripped it apart because it, it was so unlike anything else that had been on TV at that time. It was cops from a criminal's point of view. And when it started airing in the States on BBC America, Americans were like, is this a documentary? Like, right. we don't even understand. The swearing was bleeped. And people watching the show were so confused. Imagine trying to figure out what's going on in an episode of TPB with the swearing bleeped. Yeah. Um, so I always say to people, you have to watch three episodes before you even make a judgment. Because um, I think at first you're like, this is so dumb. And then you arrive in the, this is so dumb. It's amazing place. It No, it's it's taken off. It, like Netflix, What's in the mug, bud? Coffee. You're all attached to that mug, is it? <laughs> it's coffee. For your own? Yeah. Well, you strike me as a Timothy's guy. No, I'm not. It's uh, it's Starbucks um breakfast blend. Even though it's not. Breakfast. What are you it's made not... of money? Jesus. No, it's 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 from the Keurig. It's like a Keurig. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice K cups. My, my nice teenage Ninja Turtle mug. That's something a yeah. lot of people don't know about me. I, I collect mugs, and every show, if you go back on past episodes, I have a different mug. So. Hey KB, you work for the Habs, right? Well, I cover them. Yes. But uh, employed by Sportsnet. I was in Nashville last week, and there was so much love for PK down there. He's yeah. really uh, ingratiated himself to the city, and um, it's it's neat to see because it's not as much a hockey town, obviously, as Montreal is. Right. Were you there the night of his return? I was. Yes, that was pretty. Would, it was pretty heavy, right? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was. 
Well, two things were telling. I think just how well he was received initially. Like that building was almost full, like prior to warm up. Like everyone was there waiting for him right. to come out on the ice, and all of his Predators teammates did the prank of having him go out on the ice first by himself for a couple laps. Um, and then just kind of the raw emotion of him standing on the blue line watching that video up on the board prior to the game and him kind of standing on the spotlight and everyone um, being able to applaud him one more time and, and to chant his name. And then, um, you know, and then uh, on the other way, they respected him in another sense that towards the end of the game when, you know, Nashville's up a goal and the fans realize how smart fans they are, that there's two points on the line. Every time he touched the puck, he started to get booed. Right. And how quickly things changed, right? Because and it was almost in a, in a respectful way in another aspect that, okay, we've, we've applauded you. We, we thank you for coming back and everything that you've done. And now we're respecting you in a different way in that, you know, only, only the players that really matter on the other side, as in the eyes of Montreal fans, do they boo, right? And so mm -hmm. to the fact that he, he got both sides of that in one night, it was kind of neat to see how that transitioned as the night wore on. But yeah, well, that, was, that was pretty something. Terrian's gone, and we may never really know the root of the problem, or maybe you do because you were closer to the team. But wouldn't his reaction suggest that he he wasn't as um, disengaged as maybe was being reported at the time? He obviously had a lot of emotion for the team and the building and the place. Oh, sure. I, I don't think that was ever an issue. I just, what was really telling for me, because uh, a couple months earlier, we were in Nashville for Shea Weber's return, and that was another emotional moment. And obviously, Shea Weber isn't a guy that's going to show his emotion as much as a guy like P.K. Subban did, just because of their personalities and, and how they go about their days. But uh, I, I did find it quite telling, though, during that video, and while everyone was applauding, you had the Predators players up on the bench, tapping their sticks on the boards. However, on the Montreal side, nobody moved. Everyone sat there. No one tapped their sticks. No one on the starting lineup tapped their sticks. Oh, wow. They were during all Shays waiting. During or during PKs? During, during PKs. During PKs. During Shays, oh, it, was, really? it was both sides, right? Everyone was very happy for him coming back. Wow. And, that was, and then in, in Montreal for, for Subban, there was no one on the Habs bench wow. that, that really did anything. But do so, you think management threatened them within an inch of their lives? I don't know. I, my question, maybe, I don't know. Was there something said in the room before they went out that said, hey, boys, you know, no reaction during this video. Let's just get it over with and get on with the game kind of thing. I, I, I honestly don't know, but I just thought that was quite telling in the fact well, that it really, really didn't move. So, Kyle, you know, you covered in the Habs for Sportsnet. Social media is really going um, going crazy lately about this Carey Price storyline that he's starting to play like the Carey Price we all, like, like he's starting to play a lot like better than he right. started, right? And a lot of people on Twitter are saying it had to do with the Terrier um, firing. Um, and... My, but like I have a, it's a question like social media um, theme for you too. It's like as a reporter, you're kind of going through all this, all this noise and traffic about you know PK Subban or about you know Shea Weber. It's like what, how, how are you using you know social media as a reporter to kind of make sure that you get the right news because there's so much clutter in there, right? Yeah, how do right. you answer that? You Leon's don't pay a cent couch looking motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, I love it. You just keep this going all day. This is great. Um, uh, how, how do I, I think it's just, it's about, you know, knowing who you follow and, and developing relationships with, with other reporters or other people connected to, to the game or certain teams or, or the league and, and knowing who, who you trust and, and valuing certain people's opinions and, and anything else you just, you don't, you don't really worry about because there's a lot of different opinions out there, a lot of different takes. We're in an era now, certainly in the way we've seen, um, you know, sports on television go down in the States and the amount of they're pushing two talking heads yelling back and forth at each other for half an hour or an hour and how much that they're trying to push that aspect of sports. There's a lot of hot takes out there now. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you do have to be careful in, in kind of what, what you listen to and what you take into consideration and then also, you know, reserving your own judgment and your own opinions and what you observe on a day-to-day -day basis and having the luxury of being around a hockey team and being in the room uh, in the mornings and after games and, and taking all in that into consideration as well. So there is, there is a lot of, jet? A, no, no, oh. we don't fly. We don't fly on the bird. How do you we handle, do this is what I wonder. Yep. The number of times players after the game say the word, obviously. And yes. I mean, you've seen Jared Kiesel and those guys yes. parody this stuff in a pitch Terrific. perfect way. Yeah. Um, get pucks deep, go to the net hundred yeah. percent. Obviously, yeah. uh, you know, every time it's a birthday, it's a big night for guys. And yeah. <laughs> how do you refrain from going, can you please say something that I could actually use? Yeah, I, 
it's it's it, a lot of it is that in the way you ask the questions, right? Because there's a lot of reporters that will complain about how they always get the cliche answer from players, but at the same time, all their questions are always, well, uh, how important are these two points uh, tonight? Uh, how important is this home and home this weekend against the Senators? Right. Look, you go into it, and it's like you're you're inviting these cliche type answers. So that's always the one struggle I have, certainly on the broadcast when you have players in the intermission where they're in the middle of a hockey game. So already they're very much in a tunnel vision sense mm -hmm. and you want to try to, it's, it's a constant battle I have with myself and coming up with a questions. That's not an obvious one that you could word it perhaps just a little bit different than maybe that invites them to offer a slightly different thought right. than the cliche one. Even if it is about the general cliche topic, it's just, it's, it makes such a difference when you can get an answer that isn't the one that we've all heard a thousand times because I always just... remember Ralph Ben Murgy, CBC journalist and great dude, um, was talking about interviewing John Travolta at a press junket for some movie and it was in Vancouver and he walked in and he said I could tell Travolta was like like you get your two minutes he was the hundredth guy of the day so yeah. he sat down and said what's Vancouver like as a city to fly into and Travolta's <laughs> a pilot and he was like oh uh, it's it's cool because uh, obviously you have mountain ranges up outside suddenly super engaged right and it's neat that's part of the um, uh, mystique of it is to come up with different ways to crack that nut huh Right. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly if you, if you get an opportunity to like shoot the breeze with a guy off camera for 20 seconds before you go on to just ask about something that's not exactly directly related to a game or whatever you're going to ask to break them up a little bit that way. And, and to just, you know, open that up a little bit as, as you say, because it, it makes such a difference, doesn't it? What well, always brings me back to why, why would we expect if someone excels at hockey, why would we expect them to excel at English? Right. or right. Uh, spinning a good yarn or telling a good anecdote, you know? Right. They're, exactly. they're, they're different skills. And that's why a guy like Subban, who's so colorful and expressive and controversial, that's why he's fun to watch on the ice and in the locker room. We, Absolutely. We, we got to wrap up, unfortunately, right? Uh, because you have a plug coming out of your head? No, because <laughs> you said, you said that we, we have to soon wrap up. Don't do that. Yes, we do. I have a phone call coming at 4.15. Yes. Oh, my okay. time. Okay. Right, yeah, you're an hour ahead. You're so here's hour. what we do. What, okay. Okay, you guys won't believe what happens in the future. It's crazy. Okay. Here's what we do. Let's say goodbye now. Okay. And then when the phone rings, I'll just bail. Pedal? No, I don't. No, 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 no. Let's not say bye. I, oh, I, I, okay. I wanted to know quickly, too. Um, well, first of all, like, Jonathan, thank you for coming on the show. Like, Thanks for having really, me. It really means a lot. And uh, I just want to know, too, that. Uh, PD Beats might or might not be a, an inspired, like a Trailer Park Boys inspired name. And PD Beats is pretty dope. Oh yeah. my! What what would J Rock say about that? That's about that mustache? No, oh, <laughs> man. No, <laughs> sure, but about PD Beats. Oh, I love it. Oh, PD Beats. PD Beats. That stash. Uh, is it? Are you gonna head start on November? Like I don't even understand what's happening. I'm sorry about the stash. I know. I'm, I'm... What is that? The George Michael setting on your razor? <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Yo, Kyle, how about some help here? <laughs> I got nothing. I, I I would do even worse than what you've got going on. Paul right Bear right on the map. <laughs> That's oh, right. Man. That's right. Where's Where's your urn? Oh my god. <laughs> thanks for having me, Bob. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Kyle, thanks for coming on as well. Hey, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having yeah, me on, guys. It's a pleasure. Yeah, you well, too, JT. This was awesome. Jim, Bob. Yeah. Well, yeah. This, is, this has been Pop Turnative. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Kyle. You catch previous episodes on our YouTube page and SoundCloud and iTunes. Be sure to check out Tagger Torrance Podcast as well. Links will be below. And uh, thank you all. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Jonathan. Peace out, man. Pedal. <laughs> Have a good one. This is too bad. This is uh, PD Beats signing off for Pop Alternative. Have a good one. Enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Alternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Alternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Alternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.